we're talking about moving away from grades and the entire culture of education has been geared around that. We're definitely the guinea pigs. I kind of feel like guinea pigs for trying to step out on them. Yeah, I was a little skeptical. <laughs> we're also guinea pigs ourselves though, right along there with them, like trying to refine our craft, trying to refine education, take it to the next level for the 21st century. So I, I would say it was about uh, 10 or 12 years ago when I was teaching an environmental science class and uh, we had just ended a unit on climate change. And I had students who had not done well on an assessment, on that assessment. Uh, but they had done well on a number of other things and so averaging their grade together, they had a passing grade. And I just did not feel confident that, or, or good about the fact that they could have taken the class and not have demonstrated clear understanding of the factors of influencing climate change. Your job is to identify the proficiencies you've met and you're all set with, and the proficiencies you have not met yet, and therefore need to make sure you're spending some of your time focusing on, on getting those accomplished as we near the end of the semester. We've got about three weeks left. And so I didn't call it proficiency-based, I just called it well, you gotta, you gotta learn the stuff that you're supposed to learn if you're gonna receive credit for a particular class. Um, so we're making solar uh, water heaters and we're trying to focus the light on our container by making our own home. This is a pretty significant paradigm shift for the student and for the parents. And I'm also gonna throw in there still for a lot of teachers. It's, it's, not, um, it's not what we're used to. And I think for every community, every school district, the state essentially has given um, those, those school districts the ability to figure out what they think is proficient and what's important for the proficiencies. Teachers are learners too, um, and so we're, we're having to learn and operate at the same time. And until you're really comfortable, you're probably not feeling like you're doing it terribly well. So. Um, that may be some of the pushback that is coming from, from teachers in general, is, is just the lack of comfort um, in really having a firm grip on proficiency-based education and what that means. Small little slips of paper. What we'd like you to do is just to identify your top three choices. Number one would be the first country in the Middle East that you'd like to represent in this model United Nations? So with the emergence of the proficiencies, it's been kind of tough on veteran teachers. You get comfortable doing things one way, and all of a sudden things change somewhat dramatically, and it uh, it's a real challenge. It's a big mental shift, I think, for teachers in that a lot of times, especially in high school, we tend to start with like what's the content that's most interesting or most dynamic or most important for students. And then the skills come, you know, hopefully, if at all, after the fact. So this is just a total reversal of that. It's putting the skills first and foremost. What are the things that students need to be able to do in ninth grade, at the end of high school, in life in general? And then the content is just a vehicle to give students a practice. skills behind what you're doing and reading critically and being able to identify main ideas even if something which you don't fully comprehend from beginning to end is a huge skill. There are a lot of positives with this system in terms of the opportunity for students to amend some of their work. I've had difficulties in this class and when I do I can always redo things or design my own project so I can earn my proficiencies that way, which I find is really nice because I couldn't do that before. It was kind of just, you take a test and if you didn't do well on it, then you were kind of just stuck there. I mean, you're never really given much information besides you just got a lower grade. But if you do like proficiencies and you get like a lower proficiency, it tells you exactly what parts of it you were lower on and what parts you did really well. And I really like appreciate that. <laughs> it's not like the nicest thing to say, but I'm on the side of like proficiencies where I'm not too into it. I think a lot of students dislike proficiencies and are having so much trouble with it. Normally with grading, if you see a number 
I feel like you can get in more detail with numbers. A student can see a report card with numerical grades on it and think they know exactly how they're doing, as artificial as those numbers might be. Sometimes it's a rubric, or if you, you like, yeah, most of the time it's a rubric, but then if you you are unhappy with your rubric, you have to go talk to your teacher. Our reporting system that we switched to this year was really convoluted, not really clear to students or parents, uh, and it's caused our, our school to make some adjustments for next year, adopting a whole new reporting system. Um, that will be a huge improvement. A lot of it is left to the ninth grade to figure out. Like, we still don't know, like, what the guidelines are. We're coming up with all of the rubrics for this. Kind of feel like guinea pigs. We're trying to step out on them, which is, in a sense, true. We are. We're also guinea pigs ourselves, though, right along there with them, like, trying to refine our craft, trying to refine education. So that means that students, teachers, parents, politicians, everyone needs to be re-educated on this process and needs to be open and give this new system an opportunity to prove itself. Any uh, questions for this group? Historically in math, people believe what they have to do is focus on that, you know, the grain size is really, really small and all these different skills that you have to learn. Where I think that how humanities have been studied over the years has been a little bit different and so it doesn't feel as big a change. I'm going to assign each table something that they have to prove or explain. So two minutes with your table mates, start sharing your observations and questions. If I, if I think about when I was a tr more traditional teacher and I would kind of draw all these connections, the connections I were, was drawing for students were within a unit. And now, with standards, I'm thinking much more big picture and go, okay, well, what are those big ideas overall that I can keep going back to those big ideas? I think that with proficiencies, it almost makes it feel a little bit easier for students. As you heard with some of them saying, oh, well, we've done this before, now we're just applying it to something new. And it's like, yay! Instead of, oh, there's all these new things we have to learn, it's, oh, I'm going to take this skill that I already know and apply it to this different picture, this different idea. For me, it's you get so much more information about what your learner has learned. I need there are certain algebraic skills that we need to be able to use with our trig identities, but I need to know where you're at. So you'll notice that the homework doesn't have any trig on it. If I tell you 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 have a B plus in trig recal, what does that tell you? It tells you nothing. If I send you a bunch of information about, and it can be overwhelming to see all those, but. Oh, 
I'm sorry, you are having trouble with oblique triangles. You don't know how to apply those ideas. I think for me it's about that information. What information do you get very specifically about your learner? I mean, certainly, you know, there's a lot of anxiety still about grades. You know, students have to apply to colleges, and colleges look at grades, and so how do we reconcile um, standards with grades? Um, you know, I, I almost had this, like, vision of this really big problem-solving target up on the wall, and, like, everyone's all going, okay, today, where are we at now? How does this task that we just did apply to that? Where are we feeling confident? What more? I've been really clear right from the get-go, this is what your final is, this is what we've been working on. Here's the target, and we've been working, working, working on it. Uh, okay, so reflecting on your learning, learning in Socrates Cafe using the learning scales. What people were doing before that, or at least what we were doing before that, what we had been introduced to. Michaela Byam to the middle level office. Michaela Byam to the middle level office was understanding by design and so it's similar in that you start with the end in mind and you design backwards but in this case you're really designing not just where you're going to end up content wise or even big idea wise but where you're going to end up skill wise and then map backwards what opportunities and experiences are you going to provide for students so that you can coach them to get all the way you know, too proficient and beyond. So we do things called learning scales. I don't know if you know anything about them, but it pretty much goes from getting started basic proficiency proficient and proficient with distinction, and then you just compare your work to the learning scale, and if you meet the criteria, you're proficient. We can think about like, well, what what is a good listener? What is a good speaker? But I also think that as it was a new class, it was just a, it was a clean slate where we could really work on proficiencies. They don't, they don't make the learning scale and just show it to you. It's like, um, it's a discussion about what should be on the learning scale, what should be considered proficient. That for us has been key this year, is including the students in the conversation right from the beginning. We showed them the scales, we put it so that they could edit and comment. Kate's really good at, well, what are the learning opportunities we can do so that by the time a student looks at the learning scale, they see, oh, I'm already on it. Just a real entry point, like an on-ramp. And here's what you do next, and here's what you do next. And we were getting so much better, actually, or at least I was getting better at teaching all of the tiny little steps. Link evidence of why you, watch out, I'm not behind you, um, why, you, why you're thinking where you are, okay? So find evidence, and if you can't find them, you can ask, what are you using for evidence? Or you can call one of us over, okay? Step three, you're going to get into an assigned pair, and we're going to do this to just mix people up. We'll do it by number after um, to talk about what did you, how did you evaluate yourself, which one did you use, and then what did you use for evidence. And then the last piece is um, reconvening in the large group and sharing a little bit about, um, please describe one way in which you've grown in Socrates Cafe this year. Okay? We're it's not like slapping, it's not like stuff slapping grades on stuff anymore. It's just, it's a understanding based thing. Um, I am, I'm the valedictorian for this class, and so, yeah, like I would whip out worksheet after worksheet, and like sometimes it would just be like simple answers, like didn't even have to think about it much, or like apply myself much, and they would just like stamp a 100 on it, and I wouldn't even know it the next day, like sometimes I would have to look over it again for a test, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Hmm. It's not really like you go in, you take a test, you know all the answers on the test, so forth, you understand it. It's actually presenting, saying, knowing in your mind what something is. Certain students that might normally struggle at the old system, like great, like for example, I know for a fact I don't do well on testing. You know, don't think of it as slapping a grade on something and being done. Think of it as assessing a student's understanding of the, of the topic. You know, in some ways, I think one of the biggest challenges is a sort of reluctance to move in that direction. 
I'm really thinking about the start of the year when it was first sort of being really implemented. And I remember, definitely including myself, everyone was very wary of it and very, well, I don't want to do this. This is stupid. It's going to destroy all the hard work I've done to get a GPA or like, what if I'm going to fail because on a learning scale, if I get a four, then it might be an 80. It needs to be equal for all students. And Tessa quizzes and certain things just don't sometimes work that way. It's hard to say because the learning scales, I don't know. Because you have to self-assess on the learning scales, so you're thinking about what you're learning. Whereas before, I was just thinking that I knew it because I did it, um, and there wasn't any self-reflection. So now I have to be like, did I learn this? And I'm like, no, I need to learn it again. Like, I obviously didn't meet the proficiency. In Socrates Cafe, it feels more like we're working towards learning the skills rather than working towards having an outstanding GPA. Because I think there we feel as though if we have the right skills, then a good GPA will follow. Before Socrates Cafe, I didn't even realize that I was assuming things. And now it's something that I have really like, present in my life. Like, I really use it. Like, when I'm uh, arguing with a friend or something and it's like, okay, I'm right, but it's not that I'm right, it's maybe because I'm assuming something and I think I'm right, so now that I know this, I try to calm myself uh, and like explain them, they could be wrong too, or, you know, trying to talk. So Socrates Cafe has really helped me with that. That something else is, I think, true, understanding and that when I say understanding I mean that a student goes in they know what the teachers talking about they know what the what the subject is and they know how to present it to other people I think I'm just kind of excited that I've got a final exam it's not a, a secret it's not <laughs> you know something where I'm gonna like I don't know, we grew up where you got tricked and you had to guess yeah, what's the teacher yeah. gonna put on that exam and you study everything and memorize. And here it's sort of like, okay, I know what I'm supposed to show them. And it's also you're saying to them, where are you? And yeah. what are we gonna do to help you move forward? You're here the whole time for supporting and moving them forward. And I think that's also a, a difference. It's not like I'm telling you how you're doing. It's like, yeah, you know. And we've been practicing it, you know, we'll give them examples. Like we do in, in Socrates Cafe, we practice, we give examples, and let them play with it. It feels more similar to life or what I know of it, because I think that things aren't just given a number. Not everything can be quantified. So I think having learning scales where you can sort of see where you are and work your way up it is a much more organic process and I think it's proficiency based is definitely moving in the right direction I think it's just working out how we can move it Vermont PBS, partnering with local filmmakers to bring you stories made here. For more, visit vermontpbs.org.